Today on Made to Hack, I power up and run a hub motor. A while back, I made a video taking apart this uh, hoverboard motor. You can find the links in the description. Today, however, I'm going to show you how I powered up using an ESC. Okay, what I've got here today is this uh, hoverboard wheel motor or a hub motor or a hover motor, if you will, which I've looked at in a previous video where I took it apart to see uh, what was inside. And what I want to do today is I'm going to try to drive the motor to get it going for an upcoming project. The way I've decided to do this is to use one of these uh, BLDC or brushless DC motor controllers um, that has the, um, the three phases wired here that coincide with the three f power phases of the motor and then you know uh, plus minus 36 volts from the power supply. This is a simple BLDC uh, drive board that has um, an on off switch and a potentiometer to change the speed. Hub motors, um, aside from the three principal uh, wires for the three phases, also have plus minus five volt DC and th that has three hall sensors around. The idea being on a hoverboard, you're gonna want stability control, forward, backwards, speed control. I don't need any of those, I just need it to go in one direction and be able to, to um, select the speed at which it turns. So this should be okay. I'm not going to be connecting any of the hull sensor or the 5 volt circuitry. Strictly going to be um, uh, powering the um, the three phase wires. So I'm not going to be able to change direction, but I will. I should be able to control the speed at which it turns. This hub motor is a TC36V. Uh, in other words, it's a 36 volt brushless DC motor that goes up to. 10 amps, so about 360 watts. I bought a similar power supply here. This is a 36 volt, 10 amp supply to power the unit at maximum capacity, so enough wattage to drive this motor to its full power. Now, you can power one of these motors from a 12 volt power supply that I have here. However, you need something like a buck boost uh, controller like this. Strictly speaking, for this application, going from 12 to 36, you would just need a boost controller, but these tend to be sold as bug boost anyway. It's more universal that way. This little unit might work up to 50 watts. It certainly won't be able to power the full extent of this motor. The, three, the 500 watt units or 600 watt units are much larger, plus they cost maybe $20, $30. So rather than do that, I went directly to a 36 volt power supply, which was like 30 euros. There's no need to worry about boosting uh, the voltage to get the maximum power. Plus another thing you gotta consider when going from 12 volts to 36 volts is you're gonna be supplying three times the amperage coming out of 12 volts that goes into the 36 volts. So if you're running this at full power, that's 36 volts, 10 amps, you're drawing 30 amps from 12 volts. So you need much thicker wire Plus, it's going to over, you know, m a lot more heat and so on and so forth. So that's why I prefer to go directly to the 36 volt power supply and just skip the whole boosting process. Plus, obviously, you lose some efficiency uh, with the boost. So essentially, I'm going to be connecting the three phases, one to each phase here, uh, and then the, um, the negative positive 36 volts into the power supply connecting up the, um, the potentiometer and the on-off switch for the controller. Now, I don't have any of the, um, the controllers you tend to find in the hobby market. So what I'm gonna do is, I found that these, um, I don't know, glad, I don't know what you'd call them, these little ends that, that you use in like home wiring, slip onto these. I could crimp them down and then get them stuck in there. So that's the way I'm gonna connect the three phases. And then for the power supply side, I'm gonna sort of use these spade or fork uh, connectors, which screw into the, uh, it's a negative and positive here. And for this, what I do is I'm just going to strip the ends. And 
Now for these connectors that are uh, destined to be used in like um, your fuse box, um, I just use these connectors uh, and I've got one of these crimping pliers from Kalke or Kalki I guess. And this is a 1.5 millimeter um, thickness connector. I'm just going to crimp in here. So it provides a nice strong bond. And now I could also just slip it in as a makeshift connector here for this test. When I get around to using the, uh, the motor in its final application, I'll remove all this nonsense. But for now, for a test, I'm just going to connect them as such. Now for the um, the fork or sp connectors here, I'm actually going to be using my stripping uh, tool. Uh, they sort of have this area where you can uh, crimp down these types of connectors and just press it in as such. And that gets it a nice connection there. So <coughs> that's the uh, the controller. Uh, with the uh, the connectors installed and the controller connects to the plus minus 36 volt uh, output and I've already got this uh, this is the input from you know mains okay, so that's it connected this will connect to the motor itself through the three phases I'm not going to connect any of the uh, Hall sensor wiring. What I'll do is I'll uh, set this up in my vise and plug this in and try it out. Okay, I've got everything connected. Power supply to the mains. Now it turns out I was wrong. This is not an on-off switch for the uh, for the driver. It's actually a forwards and backwards switch. And I realized that when I plugged it in, it started turning. So I'm going to turn it on here. And uh, right now I just control it. It just controls from the um, uh, from the potentiometer. So this seems to be maximum speed, I would imagine. Um, or maybe it's maximum speed uh, because I, I don't have a, a heat sink on the controller. I'm think, or maybe that just is the maximum speed of a hub uh, motor. After all, it is a hoverboard, right? It wouldn't go too fast. This would probably be mounted to a heat sink, if anything, for the long term. But what I wanted to show is that, okay, so it's turned off from the potentiometer. All right. Oh, yeah, one of the <laughs> one of the phases got it disconnected. So turn it on, and if I were to flip the switch, it would stop and then it would reverse course. So I guess I do have directionality with this um, uh, with this switch and I've got speed control. So yeah, there you go. It works. One of these um, one of these ESCs or BLDC driver boards go for something like $17. I believe I bought this one on Banggood. I'll have links in the thing for Banggood or Amazon if anybody cares to buy one. One thing that I can do is just to see how much amps we're pulling from the 36 volt power supply. And um, while it's going at full speed. Okay, so showing that I'm pulling about an amp, just want to test this again. Yeah, just under one amp. So I don't know if this is the full speed or or what. And so I'll have to uh, check that out to see if if this is only partial power. I can't really stop it per se. Just a quick addendum. Uh, of course, I just realized this when when it's running. So we're drawing 0.9 uh, amps, which is. 30 watts. That's because there's no load on the uh, on the motor. Of course, they wouldn't draw any more amps than that. 
But watch as I apply a load, the amperage will of course go up. So, right, just by slowing it down, it's causing it to pull more amps. And, you know, obviously under load, it would probably go up to the full 350 watts. So, yeah, I was wrong. Uh, of course, when there's a load, the amperage will go up, which makes sense. So, well, it's just a quick video on how to run one of these hub motors from a basic uh, BLDC um, electronic speed controllers. So, um, yeah, thanks for uh, watching.